Today I give you guys further proof that a woman on her period is one of the scariest things on the planet. It's Carrie versus the 2013 remake on Movie Feuds. Start it up. Sissy Spacek dominates the screen in the original 1976 Carrie. She has that disturbed 17-year-old girl persona down pat. What the f*** does down pat even mean? Chloe Grace Moretz doesn't manage to pull off the same feat. I like Chloe as an actress and she will always be hit girl to me, however, she is far too fluffy here, for the lack of a better word. She just doesn't convince me that she's mentally deranged. They should have gone with someone like uh, Lindsay Lohan. Joking aside, they actually thought about going with her at one point, but her career just kept going like this. Anyway, Chloe tries, you can tell she does, but she's perhaps too baby-faced to sell the role right. Julianne Moore as Margaret White, however, was a good casting choice. It helps that Moore is a very diverse actress and can easily handle the source material. Is she better than Piper Laurie, you ask? Piper is a bit more lovey-dovey on the surface, where Moore tends to go over the top with her emotions. They both give great takes on the character, and I can't say one is much better than the other. Next we have the popular friend from a distance, Sue Snell. From a distance, the earth is black and gray. I don't know the lyrics. The original gives us a more realistic depiction of a high schooler, played by Amy Irving, while the 2013 remake goes straight up America's Next Top Model territory. One character that had no chance of being topped is Billy Nolan, played by John Travolta. The new movie gives us Chronicle actor Alex Russell. Speaking of, where the hell is the new Chronicle film we were supposed to get? There was supposed to be a sequel. And Cloverfield, all these found footage movies, they promise sequels and we don't get them. A lot of questions posed today. Let me know in the comments. Hard to know what I don't really care. Judy Greer, who typically plays comedic roles, is the high school coach in 2013's Carrie. She was surprisingly very good in the part. Chris Hardinson shouldn't have even been in the reboot. You can't replace Officer Anne Lewis. Hell, the Robocop remake didn't even try to replace her. They went the opposite end of the spectrum with the male black cop. Carrie is the bizarre story of a young girl turned woman who also has the gift of telekinesis the power to move things with her mind. It's unclear as to whether or not this is a side effect of the devil's work, or if she has manifested this gift due to her terrible upbringing. The newer film certainly lends itself to the former idea, as the film starts with an intense scene depicting her in-home birth at the hands of her mother. This scene was also absent from the original, which starts out like a softcore porn inside of a female locker room. I'm sure this is exactly what a locker was like in 1976, with young women frolicking to and fro, laughing and playfully tugging at their towels. So it's good to know it's exactly like the men's shower room. There are a few things in this world I enjoy more than taking a nice slow shower at the local high school. Slowly lathering myself up, touching all the provocative parts while steam dances around me carelessly, whispering thoughts of sweet nothing in my ear. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. I'm sorry, it's late when I'm filming. Now maybe I'm getting a bit carried away, but certainly not as much as the young females did in that locker room scene when they found out their friend was getting a visit from Aunt Flo. What happens after is a string of bullying that drives Carrie to her breaking point, and much like all proms, this too ends in disappointment. But really Carrie, I mean, let's be honest, you're bullied a couple times, you get some pig's blood dropped on you. Who hasn't had pig's blood dropped on them a couple times? I embarrass myself almost daily on YouTube. You don't see me burning down a school full of kids. 1976 wins for the ending alone. Having her popular sideline friend go batshit crazy in that final shot was the perfect closing. I'm disappointed this was not reused as it makes Sue's story incomplete. Although I hear that on Blu-ray there is an alternate ending that is very similar to the original where Sue has this nightmare she wakes up from, her mom's consoling her, and in the corner she sees Carrie holding her newly birthed child covered in blood. That's f***ed up. That's where I like to live. Mm. Mm. Go to your closet and pray. No. That good old <laughs> sound effect has been used time and time again over the years. Typically in a comedic way now, but definitely an iconic sound that continues to stay its welcome for almost 40 years. It's very campy to hear upon fresh viewings, and that phrase, they're all gonna laugh at you! 
was ruined for me by Adam Sandler's brilliant comedy sketch album. Seriously though, check those things out. I grew up with the albums, they're still funny as hell today. We have ourselves almost a 40 year gap, and since that time, effects have leaped forward immensely. Thankfully, 2013 doesn't go too overboard with things. Carrie does a bit more damage to the school and the town though. The climatic confrontation with her tormentors is really cool in the newest installment. Simply dodging the car like the original was not enough in this new installment. She f throws this thing into a gas station, which of course explodes as she slowly hovers away awkwardly. But before that, we get to see the chick's face just blow through the windshield in slow motion. It's just gorgeous. It's a moment I'll cherish all the way through the rest of my life. The old Carrie flick does hold up pretty well, relying on practical effects. Although the hose spraying kids down isn't quite as threatening as a set of bleachers crushing bodies till they die. <laughs> Pino DiNaggio gave us a very unconventional score for Carrie, but then again, Carrie's a very unconventional horror film. A soft yet haunting theme that works as well on its own as it does in the picture. DiNaggio scored two pop songs here too one of which features Amy Irving's sister Katie on the vocals. Composer Marco Betrami creates a much more chilling sound in the 2013 version. Gone are the softer touches, and in its place is a very disturbed tone. Much like Dinaggio, he relies on stringed instruments to sell the sound. It fits in very well, especially with the more memorable sequences like the prom outing or the confrontation with their mother at the end. 2013 gets my vote, but that's only because I hate anything remotely old. Just ask my neighbor, Glenn. No, I won't keep my TV down at 7.30, Glenn. Move out of the neighborhood if you don't f***ing like it. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Glenn's not watching this. He, he's legally blind at this point.